We're here uh, this morning at Shaker High School, and uh, <clears throat> would you uh, introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Bob Donlon. I live in Niskayuna, and uh, I was in the Navy in 1952 to 1955. Uh, Bob, did you uh, enlist, or were you drafted, or? Well, I, I started out joining the Navy Reserves and went on uh, two weeks training down at Bainbridge and when I come back I had a greetings from the president and uh, I didn't want to go sit in the foxhole and I wanted to stay in the Navy so then I volunteered for active duty. Super. Um, when you, in, 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 uh, now that's at the time we were involved in the, the Korean, Korean War. conflict. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what was it like, you know, in your initial a uh, few days in, in active duty and service, where'd you go? Well, uh, we left Schenectady here, a friend of mine, and we went to Bainbridge, Maryland, and we had uh, 12 weeks of uh, boot camp. After boot camp, I uh, came home for a week's vacation, like, and was assigned to the Fleet Sonar School down in Key West, Florida. Uh, how long were you there in the Sonar School? Sonar school was a nine-month course, and when I signed on, then I had to have two years when I signed up in the course to make sure that I had enough time left for them. So after Sonar school? After Sonar school, uh, I stayed on for another month and a half training uh, midshipmen from Annapolis, and then my next billet was the USS Robert F. Keller DE-419, which was uh, tied up and docked at the U.S. Navy Gun Factory in Washington, D.C. Uh, what kind of a ship is uh, is the Keller? It's a destroyer <coughs> escort. And uh, your job on the ship, huh? Uh, I was a sonarman. And sonar, sonar is for picking up the submarines, detecting them, and sinking them if we could. What was the, uh, what's the function of a destroyer escort? In? Can you tell me a little bit about the ship? Sure. The size. Destroyer escort, roughly about 300 feet long. <clears throat> we had uh, 210 personnel aboard, including maybe 15 officers. Uh, the purpose of a DE was to uh, escort and protect convoys from submarine attacks. And the sonar, of course, we had to hunt them out and find them. The, uh, um, is a is a DE the same as a destroyer? Uh, a destroyer is a little bit bigger and has a little bit more men aboard, but basically it's the same thing. Destroyer has more armament. Speaking of that, what what kind of armament did did your ship carry? We had uh, two five-inch guns. We had uh, I think four forty millimeters and uh, maybe half a dozen twenty millimeters. What in, in your missions against the subs? What was your uh, your defense? Your your we had uh, depth charges, uh, which in the hedgehog mount. Hey, huh? Good. Uh, that's great. Uh, <clears throat> so from you, you met the ship in Washington, right? And from there. Well, it was a, actually a reserve trainer, so uh, we used to take out reserves for training them with officers, also marine personnel, and uh, we maneuvered up and down the east coast up as far as uh, Newfoundland and all the way down to South America, into the Panama Canal, Cuba, good nice liberty ports. Nice duty. Yes. Um, <clears throat> what were your accommodations like on ship? And well, People try to say that uh, we had less space than a prisoner in a, in a jail system. And we had, you know, there were three bunks stacked on top of each other. And it was pretty cramped quarters and everything. And all our clothes were kept in little lockers underneath them. And uh, food was good. We used to eat great chow, I thought. And uh, we had a good time, really. How long were we on the ship, Bob? Uh, I was on the ship about a year and a half. Um, Andy, from, and was, was the, the time you were on the ship pretty much all reserve training or? Yeah, it was 
we'd go out for two weeks and then sometimes we'd go out for a month cruise and uh, then we went down to uh, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba for underway training for a month and uh, that was mostly anti-submarine warfare that we participated in down there then. And it was an interesting thing, we picked up a contact one day coming back in the port and the captain says, well the sub is already surfaced, you can't have one. So they took somebody a little bit higher than me, thought I didn't have enough experience, sent out a hunter killer group and a day and a half later, Russian subsurface that was watching everything that was going on. Really? Yeah, so that skipper was kind of proud of that. That's neat. Uh, in, your, in your time on the ship, uh, memorable experiences, good or bad, you know? I can't recall any bad ones. We, had, we really had a nice time. We, like I said, we visited a lot of various ports, sort of Caribbean, South America, up in Canada. We did uh, run into a hurricane coming back from Newfoundland one time and uh, we thought maybe we might pull into New York Harbor and Skipper was gung ho and he wanted to go out ground it. We ran head on into it and crushed in the bow plates and we lost our stack and we thought we were going to go down. That was the one time I was scared. <coughs> what, what happened after the damage? Well, then we went back in the port and had everything fixed up and everything and everything was just fine. Now, you were doing a lot of training for obviously for the reserve guys, reserve guys. <clears throat> were did, did did those so were those guys just kind of passing through for a period of time or uh, I think they were in you know as a reservist for their two year hitch or four years whatever it was and we took them out and trained them on our stations and whatever they were assigned to do on board the ship. Did uh, <clears throat> and and. Probably, again, given the Korean conflict that was going on at that time, there was probably a defense. I mean, it was probably also a coastal defense role that you. That well, you, <coughs> somewhat we did, but it was mostly just taking out the reserves out for training. And then when we usually did that, we usually sailed in uh, with uh, three other ships with were diesel and three other ships that were steam turbine driven. Really, what was the power on the Keller? We, we were a diesel. And was that typical of the DEs? Well, they were, they were mostly probably half and half, maybe half steam, half diesel, depending on where they were built and where. Now, is DE still in use today? The only one around that I know of is the USS Slater down in Albany. There is, I think there's two more, one in uh, Bolivia that they have, but that thing isn't active either. And uh, I think there's one over in Korea which is being dismantled right about now. And I know that Slater's trying to get parts off of it to install aboard the ship. The, um, uh, in terms of the fleet today, what's replaced it? Is there a particular kind of ship that's taken that same role? Well, now they have, I, I think they call them frigates now. And of course they can go a lot faster, they have more uh, high tech equipment and everything else. What we had was like the Stone Age compared to what they have today. Yeah. Um, during that, during the time you were in, Bob, you were able to stay in touch with your family and... Oh yeah, yeah. When we come back in, then we had liberty. If you had a long weekend, you could go home. And uh, I used to come home maybe once a month or something if, if I had to do, didn't have the duty. And uh, depending on how you felt, what you wanted to do. Um, how old were you at the time? 19. 19. Uh, you stayed in for four years? I was in two and a half years and then I still had more time left in the reserve training. The total time before I got my discharge was eight years but I wasn't uh, active duty or anything. Um, so when you got out, then what happened? Well, I went back down to GE right in my job the before as a draftsman down there and that's where I stayed until I retired in 19. Eight. Okay. Um, raised a family along the way? Uh, got married, had one son. His name is Bob. He's 40 years old. No, 41, 42. And he lives up in Clifton Park. Uh, did, as you, as you reflect back on the, uh, on your experience in the service, uh, sounds like it was 
reasonably positive experience. It, it most certainly was, and I wouldn't trade it for for anything. And I think back now, of course, hindsight is better. You know, I, I wish I had stayed in though. Uh, how do you? How would you say, Bob? It impacted the rest of your life. I mean, did it have an impact on? where you went after the service, what you did with the rest of your career? Uh, it probably had somewhat of an experience of maturing more and uh, being able to cooperate with other people in, in close proximity and things like that. And uh, it was just a great experience that I think really, I wish they still had the draft for everybody so that the kids could get it and uh, experience something like that. Um. In the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the time you were on the ship, did the ship get any commendations or citations, or did you? Well, the only one I think we might have got any recognition for was contacting that Russian sub down at Guantanamo Bay. But otherwise, there was nothing really that we you know, could accommodate for. Yeah. Um, did you take advantage of uh, any of the GI Bill, or was that available to you? Afterwards, I went to Schenectady Community College, and I went for about a year and a half and got GI benefits where they paid for the courses and things like that. Okay. Um, after you got out, did you uh, have you stayed in touch with any of the guys that you served with? Or? In fact, uh, one of the guys is coming up for our crew is coming up this Thursday. He was on the Keller with me and I hadn't seen him for probably 40 years when one day I got a phone call and we met down in Albany. His daughter was graduating from SUNY and we've been in contact ever since. Um, and you've been active in a couple of veterans groups, at least. Well, the Destroyer Escort Group here in Albany, I'm the co-chairman and the uh, secretary, and I issue a newsletter monthly, and I send out about a hundred of them. And, you know, kind of set the things up for the meetings and things like that. Um, now, and you mentioned the, uh, the Destroyer Escort uh, Sailors Association. Right. Uh, and that's a national organization. Yes. But what's unique here in Albany? Unique part is that we got the Slater here for us, and as a result, we get all kind of uh, reunions that come up here to want to visit the Slater. I had the opportunity to go down and sleep aboard it and work and try to get things back into the restoration of getting it looking like it was in 1944. And, and the Slater service, Bob, was about the same time as the Keller. Yeah. And they were, I think the, the Slater was mostly over in the Pacific where the, the Keller was, was in the uh, Pacific towards the end of the war and everything, but I think the main part was in the, the Atlantic. So by the time you were on the Keller, it was, uh, it was an older, getting to be an older ship. Oh yeah, yeah, it certainly was. Um, you mentioned some reunions, Bob. A any other reunions besides this connection you made with the uh, the, uh, the other guy you served the board with? Uh, well, the, the, the DESA group, which is the Destroyer Escort Sailors Association, they have a yearly meeting, and this year it's down at uh, North Carolina. Can't make that because of a wedding, but uh, they have that every year, and they go around the country at various locations. They take a, a vote on where the people want to go to, and uh, individual ships have their own reunions, and like likewise, they go around the country, and a lot of them like to come up to the to Albany to visit the Slater. Um, in terms of uh, the uh, the Slater, obviously the Keller, that that class of ship, um, and you mentioned you you did sonar, right? Uh, which still in use today. I mean, oh yeah, that, every ship still uses sonar. Was there anything that was considered high tech at the time on those ships? Oh boy, ours. We were lucky if we could pick up a, a subcontact out a thousand yards or so, say, dependent on the weather conditions and the sea conditions. Today they can pick up subs, man, 500 miles away, I think, with the gear that they have now. So ours was really like the rock stone ages compared to what the high tech is today. Um, what was your rank when you came out? I would come out as a third class zoneman, petty officer. Um, other did you work just with sonar men, or were there other guys that you worked closely with on the ship? Well, in the sonar gang there was about four or five of us. Most of our watches were done in the CIC, which is a Combat Information Center, and we plotted the course, 
directed to uh, speed and everything. When we were operate for a sonar, you know, submarine warfare, then of course we saw our watches in the sonar shack. Um, other, uh, what were some of the other specialties on the ship? I mean, what other rates on the ship? Well, there was a radar technician who plotted and detected other ships, surface ships, airplanes coming in. Uh, of course, then you had electronic guys that took care of the electrical gear and everything like that. I mean, you had the machinist mates who uh, took care of the, en the engine men too, and uh, the deck ports, which were the ones that maintained the whole ship, painting, keeping it in tip-top shape, and everything. And quartermaster who paid us all. <laughs> well, there you go, the <laughs> port guy. Uh, the uh, and, and what was the contingent of uh, commissioned officers on board? Was it I think we had maybe about. Ten officers, and we didn't have a full complement because when we took on the reserve trainers, then they filled in the slot that a, a full complement would have had. So we had about ten officers and maybe a hundred men, and then when the reserve time came, we filled it up. And the uh, uh, commander on the ship, the, the he was a was lieutenant a commander. His name was uh, Boris. Um, Career guy. Yes. The uh, when you uh, when you look at the role of the Navy during the Korean conflict, uh, did they play, from your perspective, a critical role in that conflict? Or? Well, I think mostly uh, the ground forces did the bulk of the work there because uh, in the Korean War it was just all strictly to the Korean Peninsula. And if they had anything, it would have been offshore bombardments by larger ships than what we had. So basically, the, the Navy probably had a smaller part, even though they, you know, they participated in landings on beaches and everything and things like that. And, and probably just moving supplies in and out of Right, them. right. Okay. Um, Bob, anything else you want to share with us is in this interview? Any, anything you want to share in terms of experiences or, or thoughts about the past and the future? Or? Well, like I had said before, uh, myself, I think they should have personally kept a draft. I think it would have been good training, good experience for the, the young boys growing up today. Uh, the, the people that you met, you made a great relationship, a good bonding with them. Uh, the first time I went down and slept over on a Slater with the Michigan group, transported me back like I was a 19-year-old again, but found out that I couldn't get up and down the ladders like I used to. But, uh, overall, it was a great experience. I wouldn't trade it for anything, and I think, like I said, everybody should be able to experience a little bit of it. Um, any final thoughts besides that? Uh, just that I just had a great time, and uh, I'm having a good time now on the Slater with the uh, Capdessa, our group here in Albany, and still meeting people. and. Uh, because uh, I am the uh, secretary, my name's in the national paper, so I get a lot of contacts from people around. Had a couple from uh, England call me one time. They come in, I tour them around Albany for a little bit, and I still get calls from the West Coast, up and down, and all across the country. So it's a great experience for me yet. Okay. Well, Bob, thanks for taking the time to do this interview, and, uh, and thanks for your service. Well, thank you kindly. It was a pleasure. Enjoyed it.